What's up, you guys? It's Matt Allen here with the Allen Peen. Hope you're having a good day today. Hey, I wanted to get back to you. We had promised a video on landscaping project that we had been working on here at the house. Uh, we finished the project. It looks awesome. Um, just going to go through some of the how-tos, some of the things to avoid. A lot of things to avoid. And uh, hopefully it's helpful for you. If you have any questions, you can drop us a line uh, or send me a text, whatever works for you. We appreciate your time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. So the first step in landscape lighting is to locate your power source. This is the wall we're going to be putting our transformer on and then running our wires from there. So once you have your transformer location found, the next step is to lay out your wire and start the hard work of digging. If you haven't seen it already, this is called the Wilton Trencher. It is an amazing tool. It weighs about 15, 20 pounds, but it is really good at making small trenches for wiring. It was made by NASA and it is completely indestructible. I think it was made by the same people that made Thor's hammer. This thing's indestructible. Make sure when you uh, start this project you have plenty of wire. You want to try to run one straight line if possible. Um, that's the 12-2 gauge wire and we had to order 500 feet of it. So. so another hack, and I know I use that term quite often and probably will continue to, um, to unroll this spool of wire is to mount it on a PVC and then it kind of just rolls out. So that's just a cross brace underneath. And it does a pretty good job rolling out. Another part of the process of pushing the wire down into the hole is to make sure it gets down deep enough into the hole. And what I have done, I've kind of taped together a pole to what's called a dandelion weeder. It's just a two pronged, um, tool and it'll push push it down nice and easily into the ground i'll show you what that's like here in a minute um, you're basically going to go forward a little bit push it down and then work your way back to the middle push it down and keep doing that until it's in the hole easy as that and then you're just going to close the hole up and you just kind of walk it forward And there you go. So a lot of times with landscape lighting, you're gonna to have to go either over, under obstacles, across driveways, things like that, because wherever your transformer is, which in this case is on the other side of the house, um, we need to get lighting all the way over to this side of the house. So today I need to run a pipe underneath this paver uh, stone. And there's two ways that I've seen or actually have done to make it successful i kind of cheated on this one i did actually pound this one through um, so i used a three quarter inch um, pvc and just pounded the heck out of it and got it through the other side the other way is using water and water pressure and what you do is put a fitting on this side and then use something like this a water jet um, on the other side coming out and turn the water on and, and kind of push the water through. Um, so with obstacles like a brick paver stone, the other thing you got to remember is when you're running the wire from the transformer, and right now I'm just kind of running the wire, make sure it goes through those obstacles on your way to the last part of where you're wiring it to. Otherwise, you'll get everything buried and realize you didn't go through the obstacle. Been there, done that. So once you have all your line laid out, the next thing to do is to start to uh, bury it. And the best way that I have found is start from the end of where your line is and work your way backward. Um, and as you can see, I've got quite a bit of line to go. I've got my spots marked out for my lights. And it just carries through. This is a 
extra line I have to run to that palm. So once your line has been put out and buried, it's kind of downhill from here. You're just going to uh, make connections. I will talk a little bit towards the end about different types of connectors. Um, some that I've found to be very easy, some that I've found to be very difficult. When it comes to connectors to your 12-2 line, and we'll pretend today that this is your 12-2 line because I am indoors, um, there are a lot of options out there. Um, one of the easiest is to cut this line and then use wire nuts to connect your fixture. Um, if you're ordering fixtures online, typically they come with bare wire and two bare wires. Uh, this already has a connector on it. Um, but if you're buying them from like Home Depot, I know I bought a bunch of pathway lights. Uh, the connectors are really already installed, so they're really easy to put on. Um, but if they're not, you have to buy these separate connectors. Um, these are what I found to be the easiest. Um, and these kind of fit uh, through the 12-2 line. And they basically um, put it together. And um, if you notice, there's like a pin on this end. It punctures a line and makes the connection. There are no silicone um, parts to this, so I don't know how long it's going to last. The silicone kind of does a seal between the, the fixture and the 12-2 line. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see, but these seem to be the easiest um, without having to cut and, and wire nut them together. And this is what the finished product should look like. So I hope that was informative, maybe a little bit entertaining for you. I am definitely not an expert when it comes to landscape lighting. If you have questions, you can always refer to some of your local professionals. If there's something in the video I can help provide more uh, information on, send me a text, send me a, a, an email, whatever I can help with, I'm glad to. Thanks again for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you on the next adventure.